Good morning, dear friends, and greetings in the name of Jesus our Lord. Thanks be to God who has given us this new day for us to live and glorify Him. And today's meditation is taken from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 24, verse 32. This is the story of the two disciples on the day of resurrection, on the first resurrection day. Two of the disciples got so depressed and so discouraged, disheartened, downcast, they decided to leave Jerusalem and go to their village of Emmaus, about seven miles away from Jerusalem. It is about them. And in verse 32, <clears throat> this is what they said after after Jesus has talked to them and then sat with them and uh, broke the bread with them and then he disappeared. This is what they said. They said, they looked at each other and they said, they asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? A burning heart and in fact, you read this passage, the whole passage from verse 13 to 35. This is, this, this is the passage that talks about this incident. The risen Christ is the answer to your life situations. It doesn't matter what the situation is. And uh, depression is one of the world's most prominent emotional illnesses. Depression actually is a killer disease. We don't realize it. And especially these days, during this epidemic and uh, lockdown uh, periods, time, there are hundreds and thousands of people all over the world are getting depressed because just sitting inside the house, husband and wife looking at each other, and the children the same thing. Sitting, sitting inside, our whole life is, is changed and turned for the worse in many cases. And uh, how to deal with this disease of depression? Most people suffer from this killer disease sometime or the other in their life. Here in this passage are two of the disciples of Jesus. They, these, these two were not among the 12 apostles, but the, he had so many disciples who remained you know, in the upper room on the day of Pentecost itself. We read about 120 of his disciples gathered together. And it was on 120 disciples that the Holy Spirit came. Now, how did Jesus set them free and deliver them? They were so depressed, they decided to leave everything, go back to their village and get away from all this and uh, sleep. And they never went to that village to return back to Jerusalem again that night. They went there to spend a few days away from all the confusions that was going on. Now how did Jesus deal with them? Jesus used the threefold scriptures, I mean threefold uh, remedy in uh, setting them free. Number one, instructions from the word of God from the scriptures. Now what do we read here in this passage? He listened to them and engaged them in conversation. It is important that you share your problems with someone in whom you have confidence. Someone whom you can trust. It is very important. A different depressed patient usually hesitate to share with anyone 
I remember one of my very close friends during the days of my Bible college days. He joined in North India and he was teaching in one of our Bible colleges. And uh, we used to meet often and by meeting him often I, I realized this man is really suffering from depression. And I coaxed him to let me know what's the reason. He would not share and he would not share with anybody. And the result to us, he, he, he kept his head under a running train and killed himself. That is very sad. That is what depression did. And that's why it is important for any depressed patients to share your problem with someone in whom you can trust and you have confidence. Please do not keep anything to yourself. It will ultimately drive you to kill yourself. And um, then he, he not only listened to them, and uh, then he walked with them. He walked with them through the scriptures. If they had only known the scriptures, Jesus told them, if you had only remembered the scriptures and know the scriptures and remember these scriptures which you talked about to me in all the Psalms and prophets and uh, so many of God's servant, you would not have felt so depressed. And the mistake they made was they didn't remember the scriptures. If they had only known, important that you remember the scriptures and that will keep the depression away. You keep uh, reciting these scriptures. There are no problems or questions uh, for which the scripture or the Bible has no answers. You name any problem, you name any sickness, any troubles. The Bible gives the answer. And I emphasize this again. Because the people of God, either they do not know the scriptures, and those who, who know, they don't remember the scriptures, and recite the scriptures, and that is a problem. So don't make the mistake of ignoring the scriptures to keep you that will keep you uh, keep the depression away from you you don't have to worry and struggle with yourself there are promises that you can stand on every day of the year dealing with any kind of situation there is nothing beyond the grace of god you know, concerning David meeting Goliath, the one sentence I want to leave with you, that is this. No giant is bigger than our God. <clears throat> Keep that thing in mind. And the second thing that Jesus used to us, intimacy. He helped them to get intimate with Jesus Christ. Intimacy with Jesus. It is very important that you as a child of God through the new birth and baptism and now you've made your confessions, remember who your God is and be, uh, make every effort to draw closer and closer to Jesus Christ and get intimate with Him through the studying of the scriptures and spending time in worshipping and praising God. First, Jesus joined them and uh, walked with them and uh, talked with them. And this is our Savior, our Lord. And that is why we need to uh, have, a, have a, uh, we need to, to join ourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ. One of the reasons, the most important reasons for which Jesus chose the 12 disciples was that they may be with him. And so my friends, learn to be with Jesus and then you 
uh, you you walk with Jesus and then you talk with Jesus. Hallelujah! What a privilege God has given us. His um, he, he they then then they came to the to the gate to their village where they were going, and uh, it was almost evening. So these friends by then realized that he is a, he is more than a friend. They felt very comfortable with him. And so they said, Jesus pretended as if he was walking on. But these friends invited him, please stay with us tonight. Because this is already evening, this is supper time, this is sleeping time. And Jesus gladly went with them. But uh, he never refused an invitation by anybody. Hallelujah. Anybody invite him for a meal? He gladly accepted. And so he was known as a party man. No, he never refused any party invitation. They invited them and uh, they invited him and he went with them. And then they sat together for their supper. And his presence changed their mood. He entered into a sweet, intimate fellowship with them. You know, that is very important. That intimacy not only uh, removed all doubts and fears in their hearts, but set them free from their unbelief which caused that depression. When did it all happen? When they sat together for, um, for the supper, once he is invited, once he comes in according to your desire, then he will change his role. He will not be a guest. He became the host. It is he who took the bread and blessed it. And it is he who broke the bread and gave it to them. And as he, they, he broke the bread, you know what the Bible says? Their eyes were opened and they recognized him. Perhaps they saw the nail pierced mark in his hand. And they saw the nail print. And thus they recognized him. That could be the way they have recognized Jesus. The moment they recognized him, he disappeared. And that is when they looked at each other and t told each other, were not our hearts burned within us as he talked to us the scriptures and opened the scriptures to us. Hallelujah. My friends, the scriptures will set your hearts on fire. We don't understand very often and we don't realize how powerful and influential the scripture can be. That is why learn as much scriptures as possible. If there is one thing that can set a genuine Holy Ghost to fire within you, is, is the word of God. So go where there is teaching of God's word. And today I see so many people, they don't spend any time for themselves reading the word of God and getting confirmed and firmly rooted and grounded in the knowledge of God's word. They run all over the place to see miracles and experience miracles. Manifestations there, miracles there and running here and there everywhere. And people don't mind spending thousands and thousands of rupees to travel somewhere where their favorite evangelistic preaching. There is miracle. And my friends, miracle is not the most important thing in your life. Miracles will happen. That is up to God. What you need is intimacy with God that can grow only by the word of God. You need the fire of God within you. And for that fire, 
go where there is a teaching of God's word. And you yourself read the word of God. Meditate on God's word. Hallelujah. That will set your hearts on flame for Jesus Christ. And all the doubts and fears will be melt in that fire. Hallelujah. And the third thing that Jesus used was. Uh, the third remedy was immediately they were willing to get involved with Christ. How? By proclamation. The Bible revealed to us in this passage that these two disciples certainly did not come to the village to return to Jerusalem that same night. That was not their intention. But after meeting with Jesus and listening to the word of God, the scriptures to them, everything was changed suddenly. Their hearts began to burn within them with a fire. And that fire gave them a message. There was a message burning with them, with them to declare to the world. What is the message? Christ is alive. He is alive. He rose again. We walked with him and he talked with us and we sat with him and we broke the bread together and he blessed the bread just like on that day when he sat with us in that upper room. We saw him. This message, Jesus is alive. The resurrection message was burning within them. They could not contain it. They knew that they have to bring it out and give it to their friends. So they ran to Jerusalem that night itself. If it took five hours for them to walk these seven miles, it took only one hour to reach Jerusalem. Because that is the difference. Ha, what a joy it is. Are you depressed? Do you have a depress depressed patient in your church, in your home? Here is the remedy, a threefold remedy. And I pray that you will apply these remedies whenever you see depression. Remember this. God loves you. He cares about you. May the Lord's blessing be upon you. Heavenly Father, I thank you for speaking to us from your word. Now we know how to deal with the depression. And thus, Lord, if we remember this and we can use this threefold remedies to rescue and heal and save so many hundreds of people who are suffering from depression. Thank you. And may our own lives be strengthened and beyond the reach of depression because we are under the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you for hearing us. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. God bless you, my friends. The rest of the day of today is a great time for you to enjoy living for Christ. Sing your songs of praise and of His greatness. God bless you. Amen.